Welcome to another TOEFL listening practice video. In this video, you will listen to a lecture, answer some questions about it, review the correct answers and explanations. Channel members can download their worksheets in the community tab of the channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more TOEFL listening practice. Today, we're going to dive into one of nature's most enchanting phenomena, bioluminescence. This isn't just about pretty lights. It's a complex chemical process that has evolved independently many times across various organisms, primarily in the marine environment, but also on land. So what exactly is bioluminescence? Simply put, it's the production and emission of light by a living organism. Unlike incandescence, where light is produced by heat, bioluminescence is a form of chemiluminescence, meaning it's a cold light. Very little heat is generated in the process. This efficiency is crucial for the organisms involved. The basic mechanism involves a light-emitting molecule, called a luciferin, and an enzyme, called a luciferase. The luciferase acts as a catalyst, accelerating a reaction where luciferin reacts with oxygen, often in the presence of other cofactors like ATP or calcium ions. This reaction releases energy, which is then emitted as light. Different organisms have evolved different luciferins and luciferases, resulting in a variety of colors, from the common green and blue, seen in marine life, to the yellow of fireflies. Let's talk about its functions. Why would an organism invest energy in producing light? There are several primary reasons. One of the most common, especially in the deep sea, where sunlight doesn't penetrate, is predator deterrence. Imagine a small plankton. If it's attacked, it might flash brightly, startling the predator, or even attracting a larger predator that then eats the initial attacker. It's like a biological alarm system. Another crucial function is attraction. This can be for mating, as seen in fireflies where distinct flash patterns are used to identify potential mates. Or it can be for attracting prey. The anglerfish is a classic example. It dangles a bioluminescent lure from its head to draw unsuspecting smaller fish directly into its mouth. Think of it as a natural fishing rod. And finally, some organisms use bioluminescence for communication within their species, beyond just mating. This is less understood but is believed to play a role in schooling behavior or territorial defense in some marine organisms. What's particularly intriguing is the diversity of organisms that exhibit bioluminescence. We're talking about bacteria, fungi, jellyfish, squid, deep sea fish, and, of course, insects like fireflies. Each has adapted the basic chemical process to suit its specific ecological niche. Researchers are still discovering new bioluminescent species and unraveling the intricate details of their light-producing mechanisms. It's a field with immense potential for scientific discovery and even for biotechnological applications from medical imaging to sustainable lighting. One, what is the main purpose of the lecture? Two, according to the professor, what is a key difference between bioluminescence and incandescence? Three, 
which two components are essential for the basic chemical reaction of bioluminescence? Four, why does the professor mention the angler fish? Five, what can be inferred about the future of bioluminescence research? Six, what is the relationship between luciferin and luciferase in the context of bioluminescence? <laughs> 